the book of exodus in the first video we explored chapters 1 to 18 which it tell the foundation story of how god rescued the enslaved israelites by confronting and defeating pharaoh while offering the way of escape through the blood of the passover lamb God then delivered his people by bringing them through the waters of the sea and then into the wilderness where surprisingly they grumbled and complained. Now we go to Exodus 19 to 14. Hi friends. This is Kriba Global. You're watching The Light. Now the second half of the book of Exodus opens as Moses leads Israel to the foot of the Mount Sinai where God invites the nations of Israel to enter into a covenant relationship and here we reach another key moment in the biblical storyline because This is picking up in the developing God's promise to Abraham. So remember from the book of Genesis God promised that through Abraham's family somehow he would restore his blessing to all of the nations. And here we find out more. God says that if israel obeys the terms of the covenant they will be so shaped by god's law and teaching and justice that they will become a kingdom of priests which means that they will become god's representatives and show all of the other nations what god is truly like now the people of israel eagerly accepted the offer and so god's presence appears right on the top of mount sinai in the form of clouds and lightning and thunder and moses goes up as their representative and god opens with the basic terms of the covenant that famous 10 commandments these are like the basic terms of the agreement how the israelites and god are going to relate to each other and then after this come another collection of commandments which you fill out the first 10 in more detail there are laws about israel's worship about social justice how they are to live together all shaping israel into a nation of justice and generosity that's different from the other nations so moses writes down all of these laws and he brings them down to the people who again eagerly agreed to enter into this covenant with God and once they do so God takes the relationship forward another step he tells Moses that he wants his holy divine good presence to come and to dwell in the midst of israel which develops another aspect of god's covenant promises remember humanity's rebellion in the garden it was access to god's presence that was lost but now it is through the family of abraham 
that God's presence is coming once again accessible through his covenant relationship. And first with Israel and then somehow one day to all nations. So what follows are seven chapters of detailed architectural blueprints about this sacred tent called the tabernacle. There's the outer courtyard with an altar and then in the center there is a tent that has an outer room and then inner room and then inside the inner room which is called the most holy place is a golden box called the ark of the covenant and there is angelic creatures over the top of it it's a hot spot of god's presence now there is a lot of detail in these chapters and it's important to know that every piece has some kind of symbolic value all of the flowers the angels the gold and jewels it all echoes back to the garden of eden the place where god and humans live together in intimacy and so the tabernacle is like a portable eden so to speak it's the place where god and israel can live together in peace at least in theory because right here something goes really really wrong israel breaks the covenant as moses is up on the mountain receiving the blueprint for the tabernacle down below at the lamb the israelites they were losing patience and so they asked moses brother aaron to make for them a golden half idol so they can worship it as the god who saved them out of slavery in egypt now god's presence it's right there on the top of the mountain they can see it but here they are below breaking the first two commandments of the covenant that just agree to no other gods and no idols now what follows is really important god knows what's happening down below so he first invites moses into his own anchor and pain and he tells moses what he wants to do just to wipe israel out but moses in the seeds by appealing to god's character he says first of all destroying israel would be going back on your covenant promises to abraham and then moses appeals to god's reputation among the nations what would they think if they see you destroyed your own people and so god accepts moses in the session and he relents and while he does bring his judgment on those who instigated idolatry he forgives the nations as a whole and promises to renew his covenant and it's right here at this point in the story that god for the first time describes his own character to moses he says the lord is merciful and gracious he is slow to anchor abounding in covenant faithfulness he forgives sin but he will not leave 
the wickets unpunished we have this tension god is full of mercy but also he must deal with evil if he claims to be good and above all god is faithful to his promises even though it means he knows he is committing himself to a people who are utterly faithless and so after renewing the covenant with israel god commissions moses to go ahead and build the tabernacle and once again we get a five long chapters describing in detail is the construction of the tabernacle and it all comes together in the final chapter where the tabernacle is finished god's gracious divine presence comes and hovers over the tent and our hopes are high and so moses he goes right up to enter into the tent and he cannot he actually cannot go in and that's how the book ends it is really surprising but not really if you think about it you can see now how much israel's sin has damaged the relationship with god in more ways than we realized so the book opened remember with the pharaoh's evil threatening israel and treating god's covenant promise but now as the book ends israel has become its own worst enemy it is their sin that is threatening the future of the covenant and so the question as the book closes is how is god going to reconcile the conflict between his holiness and his goodness in his presence with the sinful corruption of his own covenant people the solution of that problem is what the next book is about but for now that's the book of exodus if this video has been helpful to you please like subscribe and continue to watch kriba global the lights please click the bell icon below don't miss any of the powerful content we have in store if you have a favorite bible words please write it in the comments below bye